Uli. Imagine you, there was a lady that was like, oh, I'm a woman, I'm a woman, I'm a woman. And they were marching now with, God damn it. I don't know, some of you have seen it all. But well, here is one of them. Jesus. Imagine that they broke into rooms, they said they are looking for internet pro stars. So they have no specific person they are looking, government agents, so they have no specific people they are looking for. They have no idea of the room they are staying. They are supposed to be security, not be me and you. We just, we just won't go guess who we are looking for. Say so Nigerian way. Why are you sleeping in a hotel as a woman? Don't you have husband? It is only a very wayward woman that sleeps in a hotel. Oh yeah, come out. But these guys went into an Akure on those state fair nightclub. So they brought out all of the people inside the club, beat them like they are thieves. And guess what? The girls, they stripped the girls naked. True story, right? Outside the club, they stripped all the girls naked. With all their bomb bomb and everything now, right? They now told them to lie on the, on the road, like on the pavement. They now pour them water, like that. They started splashing them. I can't show you the video, and I can't show you the picture as well. I saw both. And all I could just ask myself was like, God damn it, man. <laughs> could this actually be the things that, when I was living in Nigeria, could this be the things that I probably see too? And I kind of always pray to God, hey, may you know, be my portion. No. But I never really saw it as uh, this horrible. I mean, the way they treat you, the way they beat you up, the way they do all this, right? EFCC, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. If they are investigating me, right? Because I have committed a crime and I am lodging in an hotel in Lagos. Why should you break all the rules of the hotels? Why do you have to beat people up like you want to kill them just to spread fear? You will march all of the guests out into the compound of the hotel and you start shooting sporadically into the air. Bah, bo, bah. EFCC. Hello, Abba Insheo. Eh? Hello, Abba Insheo. Uh, God go help you, Nasha. Setulamo. You understand? Because what the heck? What in hell? Like security agents who are who knows who they are looking for, and they have all of their intel straight. There will be who kind of lay their hands on a woman like that. What kind of security agent are you? What kind of training did they give you that you will bust into a room and you found a lady? And then the first thing that comes to your mind is to Here. I'll leave it at that. I will not use all of our time. So we are going to start at the people's parliament now. Okay. And uh, the way that works, or should we just leave people's parliament out of it and I'll just give you more gist, then I'll take us. What do you think? Yeah? People's parliament, or I should just finish a few other stuff I have here. Give you more gist, and then uh, take us. So sorry, I always kind of ask all those questions when, I've, when we already have a deal. So we already have a deal. And that deal is that uh, we're having the people's parliament. Okay? So I will try to copy the uh, link. If you don't have it already, I'll copy the link. 
and I will put it in the comment section for those. Uh, <laughs> you know, sent to be. Okay, I'm gone. You know, say if I if I have to give you more gist, right? Like an it's not gist, but it's like an update. I have them noted here. But time won't let me kind of use all of them. I still have like uh, maybe two or so. We can just you know. I'll just leave it on and then uh, <laughs> see if people don't want any distraction. Okay. So that means we are not having the people's parliament now. So it's just going to have to be phone calls. Yeah. You cool with that? Okay. So what we're going to do now is that uh, now that's the EFCC part. Okay. So to me, I believe that the EFCC is your new SAS. And the new SARS simply means that uh, the brutality continues. And these are the kind of people that will shoot at you. They will wear mufti, they will wear no uniform, and they will pump their, I mean, they will load their guns and they will turn them on their civilians in the name of protecting the establishment, you know. And there are many, many, there are many like them. Murderous people wearing uniform and officially carrying gun. Huh? So, but let's kind of go to Lagos. This time around is about uh, environment again. And for so, to somebody like myself, right, I do believe that uh, every information really counts, okay, especially for those who have uh, properties in Lagos. News like this help you to understand what are they doing around you and what could suddenly just pop up in case if anything, we have to pop up, right? So yes, uh, we won't we won't have uh, the people's parliament. And people have said that we should move, maybe we should move it to some other time. Okay, and that's my fault. Normally, I shouldn't have spent this long time. I should have just give you like maybe one or two cheers, blah blah blah, get you in the mood, and then get everybody on. Or uh, we can have it some other time. Okay, but we will have. But we will take calls. Yeah, we will take calls. So in Lagos, right, where this guy who has been who has been in charge of the environment, the guy in charge of demolitions and the rest of that, they are battling with the flooding, and he's doing his uh, he's doing his best to kind of bring more awareness to why a lot of people have their own contribution. They contributed to uh, the perennial flooding that they are facing in Lagos, and how. It's not just about people building on the channel like you know, they want you to believe. It is more, it is, it is showing why these things are not, why, why, why this uh, uh, infrastructure, so to say, right, uh, why they are not uh, functional. Okay, don't let me put it that way. I think it's showing to us why or how people are the cause of uh, flooding in Lagos. Eh? I think I'll frame it that way. That's better. So this guy is trying to can show to us that uh, people are responsible for most of these things. But me, when I was seeing the videos, right, I was seeing government incompetency. Yeah. I'm seeing incompetency that mostly is caused by corruption. I have seen many videos of the protests in Kenya. Kenya, like any other place in the world, they have their own uh, shanties too. They have their slums, Kenyan slums and all of that, no doubt. But when I was monitoring all their protests, day, noon, night, they always had light. There was light, there was electricity. Even in some of the shanty towns, eh, where people were protesting, I saw electricity. I'm not sure if uh, Kenya has 24 hours electricity or not. So, well, if you are a Nigerian living in Kenya, there must be something different from Kenya and Nigeria that will make you feel like, no, I'd rather be here. Because if the place is worse than Nigeria, you won't be there, would you? I'm just saying. So I've seen that. And I've seen it also that their roads, their streets were clean. Again, don't get me wrong, though. Okay, uh, this could be just like a the Nairobi, you would say, Abi. But I'm talking about other areas now. 
we I have seen their protests, and I'm like, oh, that's not bad. But you see what I saw, what I have seen in Lagos is this. Lagos has been so mismanaged, so looted, that they have barely nothing left for main infrastructural improvement. So to entice the people, so they could tell you, we are doing the, this monorail, or we are doing that uh, uh, blue rail, and we are doing that or another that could take years. Or critical infra infrastructures for real. Something that shows that you are actually building a city. Something that shows that you are actually building a state. You know, good sewage system. So that if you flush your toilet in your houses, it just goes straight into one uh, sewage system from the city. And then the whole thing is so well connected that, well, yeah. Open defecation will not open defecation will not be a thing. Then when you now look at uh, Lagos being like surrounded by water, simply means that the Lagos uh, criminals should have invested more in building uh, deeper drainages. When I say deeper drainages, it simply means that it is time for Lagos to be done with the money they have. It is time to be so done with the. Uh, Open drainages that is that are filled with uh, plastic bags, pure water bags, and all of those things that are blocked away. But that guy wanted us to kind of see it differently. Oh, the people are always this or that. No. Before I was born, there were few burning uh, refuse dump sites in Lagos. I was born in Lagos. I'm a Lagosian too, even though I'm a Niger, I'm a Niger woman. So he says, "Son, we cool." So we is also from each other. Yeah? And a bit uh, closer than the kitty. The kitty where Fashola was from. Abi Ragbi Jiwe Tiknumbo is from. Or the same kitty. You know what I mean now? Like everybody shall know say if we have to say where we come from, majority of those guys in charge of uh, Lagos are not from Lagos. No doubt, but yeah, they grew up in Lagos, or some of them were born in Lagos, like myself. Uh, you will say. So you would kind of feel like, uh, you know, before I was born, before I was born, right? They have this uh, burning refuse uh, dump site open. Air pollution, people. Before I was born, I'm 40 now, right? 40 years old. And some of those who were born after me, myself, they are still seeing them. If you go to Olushosun, if you go to a jota, right? Once the Olushosun uh, dump sites and smoke burning, it's, it's always been burning. For decades, in the city that used to be the capital of Nigeria. Now, if you go there today, it is still there. A lot of people who have lived most of their lives around the area, they've uh, suffered different uh, health care problems, or health problems, so to say. And they will probably never even think, oh, it was because I actually breathed in the, the burning plastic. Oh, I, 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 I've been smelling the burning air, you know. So it's always been like that. So there's no refuse collection system that is uh, really dependable. The amount of uh, waste that Lagos produces in a single day and the amount of charges they charge them to, depo I mean, to dispose those uh, waste. And even some of uh, their, you know, their proposed uh, turning waste uh, to wealth in a way and all of that stuff, right? They still couldn't really keep Lagos uh, clean, not even 5% of it. Because there is no real will, nothing. Okay? So when it rains, all of the uncollected refuse and all that, building all of their sewage system, well, poorly constructed one anyway. And then everywhere is flooded. So this guy wants to show us why this continues to happen. And our people are contrib uh, contributed to that, not our government. For me, I want you to pay attention to the area. That's what I want you to see. Okay? They will show you things, but I want you to pay attention to the area. And you tell me, if you can cite any government, kind of any government presence, okay? And you can see, oh, look at that beautifully, beautifully constructed 
are covered, uh, beautifully constructed uh, drainages, or uh, beautifully connected uh, or constructed uh, canals built by the government. No. Watch this. But don't forget to pay end of this lake. Mm. Me, I want 100 leg by leg by Chevron. Gracefield. then I want to move. Pass to Oriye. She wants to be there, she wants to be there. Anyway, since we are coming on Saturday, I will go end, you know. I <laughs> no, but it's going to be besides not going to be what they are they are still going another one kilometer For line one, line can you line no, no, Just stretch, take it in. one. Yeah, 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 try it you know how I have driven, I also understand what the road has So, you know, the road you see at towards end of the road. The road is If we clear this edge, I'm not clear the bay. 
I was there, I moved down from here down to the street. The problem from here down to the street with the goods. The problem is not from here, you The place where the gas jelly jumps up to that contamination, that is where the water blocks. So that place needs to be special. We said about it this point concerning conservation. They never did the problem with this. So it's not here, this place is free. But that's the major place. The major place. The major place. The major place. The people that are saying here, they are trying something. Mm, badly behaved, but we need the authority. The law. And we understand the, the coastal road is also coming this way. We don't know. We don't know about that. So. No. And I clear all the sites. Everything else. Anything else. I was there yesterday. What to get? I move inside there. I move inside You see all those uh, the water channel as well as uh, that landlord that they were asking him, why didn't you extend your drainage down there? And it was like, no, we, we, we're still going to do it. We're still going to extend it. Your meter too was like, why is he not there with an engineer? If they actually have something to do other than that, just that show off, that's, uh, you know, but me, I like the show off. It gives me the opportunity to see around. Right? Yeah, to see around and be like, uh, that should be a trillion era state. Yeah, Lagos is like uh, a trillion era or two trillion era states a year. Ah. Turning things around shouldn't be that difficult or hard. All right. But it is good for me to show it back to you. Eh? their lies like oh yeah you know they told you this is but oh, we have this or that now when we have a chance of looking at it we're like no you are not what you said you are no you are not so let that guy take them to the end of that water let's go see something then that guy also says something too let's go back okay um thank you on tuesday we had a back-to-back -back, like 48 hours away from and we had some uh, incidents reported around the Lake Corridor. One or two of them we handled in the rain on Tuesday. One of them was at the Freedom Junction Corvette, where um, the Lagos State Environmental Flood Abatement began had to move in and clear the debris and the water moved and then the road was flood free. That's the Gate Junction by Freedom Road. And then some other areas, but particularly we had one or two areas that a bit worrisome. Agumbi and then the Alpha Beach Road. So, but we couldn't come to the Blue Commission. We had a water conference that was ongoing. That was a global program. So, first thing this morning, we agreed let us come and see it and assess it. So, the first point of call was the upstream of System 156, that's the Alpha Beach behind the university or behind, behind the university what we found out was there was a blockage somewhere and we had agreed that by saturday they should come in and see how they can clean it up to conservation once we get the conservation we will appraise again 156 is very strategic and we've said this in the past few months people built to block system 156 some families on this corridor obliterated with developers system 156 but we have said the state will not hold his hands and allow them for profit sake destroy infrastructure that belong to individuals and even the state 
So by far, they will start the full excavation. By the time we get around conservation, we will appraise it and be sure whatever blocked it will be removed. And from there, we came into Ajino, uh, appraised the um, canal on that corridor by the regional road. We went to Agwinki. We appraised whatever it is. Now we have agreed with the experts that uh, the Agwinki road needs a connector that will take the water from the road and discharge into the one that goes to the lagoon. What they have there is small. We cannot serve the level of development, the volume on that Agwinki stretch. And once we choose to do that, then the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure will have to come in also and lift the level of the road. That's what we have agreed today. And then from there we came into Kushola. I, okay, 10 years ago, where we standing was a lagoon. So we had a collector from the junction that permitted there by the edge of the lagoon discharging. But there was an approval by the state government to extend this um, and then they've done this. So the water volume, the gravity of the water cannot move into the lagoon. So that's why we have this challenge here and then we appraise it. So I think we have a meeting now and people will find the solution to solve this problem of crucial land. This is how we are hearing. Told, that day was a wetland. That's the truth be told. Agogi was a wetland. Reclamations were carried out. So what we have to do is give them infrastructure that will drain the Agogi road. And they must also take responsibility. We were here last year with the team when we said we saw notices that they should remove some contraventions.